sustainability is a really big issue at the moment. I saw a, a comment actually in um, in a report that says we're you know in today's world we're moving from financial budgets to uh, to carbon budgets. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned obviously printing. That's that's a really big one. What other sort of sustainability and, and benefits are involved in introducing a, a digital solution? We just worked with a, a group rolling out light year a number of months ago. And anyway, at the end of the financial year there, they were going for green certification. So last month in July, they basically looked at the changes of the previous July to this July. And we were saying things like obviously paper, printing, toner cartridges and things like that. What came out of their audit was they had actually shrunk their accounts payable team from four people in an office to one person working flexi in and out hot desking, right? Wow. They put those other three people into other roles in the organization, but the accounts payable function, for want of a better word, across their 13, 14 hotels actually became one person who was only there a couple of days of the week. So their audit actually revealed that their biggest saving was actually in the cost of running the office, the electricity of the office and all of that sort of stuff, because you've only got one computer running, not four. You don't have paper running. You don't have the room being heated and things like that. So uh, from a sustainability perspective, it's not the normal way I would think of it, because I'm thinking Mm -hmm. about paper, toner, ink, things like that. Uh, But their audit basically showed their biggest savings was actually the shrinking of the footprint of of the human office. That is interesting. Yeah, yeah. They're very interesting, actually, isn't it? And as you said, um, those staff that were in accounts payable can be redeployed. Um, it's an, an issue we've got at the moment, you know, trying to find good staff. So if you can if you can actually, you know, free some staff up and use them in another area, then that's a wonderful thing as well. I'll give you, I'll give you a great story, actually. So uh, this was actually before pandemic. We went into a, a national fast food group. And we were introducing Lightyear to the group. And you can always, when you're introducing something that's a change process, there's always someone that's a bit prickly to it, right? And that person is generally the person who feels as though this is going to impact their job. It's going to make their job less uh, safe and secure. So we basically said, and we we identified the person pretty quickly, and we said, can anyone in the room tell us the price of uh, chicken thigh fillets off the boat? And everyone looked and went, no. And this one guy put his hand up and whatever the price was, $6.90. And I said, you know more about procurement than anyone else in your organization. And I guarantee your job is just manual entry. And he went, that's all I do. And I went, right. Imagine how much you could do for an organization, knowing what you buy and what you're spending for it. If you could then go and negotiate and, you know, your work in AP becomes a, you know, six hours a week as opposed to. 36 hours a week. Yeah. Um, so it's very, very true. This generally doesn't mean that you are then going to reduce your head count, although that is certainly an upper opportunity if people want to do that. It's reallocating those resources to actually make a difference in the organization as opposed to just you know manually entering and pushing paper around. Yeah, using people for higher capabilities, really. Yeah. Um, that, that is really interesting. So- 